My name is Peter and I am 27 years old. By this age, you might think that I would have my life together, that I would have a steady, normal 9-to-5 job, that I would have my own place and that I would think about having a family of my own. Yeah, that may be the traditional route that so many guys take, but not me. See, since I was just a small kid, I got compliments on my looks. To keep it short, I always look good. I have blue eyes, dirty blonde hair, and a defined jawline. From the age of 15, I started going to the gym, and the fact that I perfected my body to near model level made me that much more desirable to women. Because I am attractive, I got special attention in almost any situation. Life was easy for me, and I never had to struggle to get anything. Most of the time. I couldn't see myself at a desk, wasting my life away. I like to live it up and party. What I'm about to tell you about, well, my profession, may seem like unethical to some of you, but I just want to tell you the truth. The truth is that I am, I was actually, a person who kept women company, for lack of a better word, for the position. But not just any type of women. I would seduce older women who had a very good financial situation. I mean mansions, luxury cars, maids, different properties, and so on. I didn't care how they got in that position. I could have been through an inheritance, hard work, or just the fact that they married rich. And I was their toy. I was taken care of. I had the luxury of going to any country in the world on their private jets. I was spoiled with champagne, designer clothes, expensive watches, and the list goes on. Basically, I didn't have to work. All I had to do was keep them company, accompany them to different events, and, among other things, you can figure out for yourself. They would take care of me, and I would whisk the loneliness away. It was a win-win. I was living the dream, and everything was perfect for a while. This went on for a couple of years, and by meeting and working for these different women, I was introduced to more of them. I was a part of a different social class in no time. I forgot how to ride the bus, and I learned the difference between a Ferrari Monza and a Ferrari F40. Yeah, everything was amazing. One evening, while I was accompanying one of my dates to this social gala, I heard about this heiress of some massive fortune. She came out of old money, her ancestors doing all kinds of businesses, and she was well connected with people who mattered. I saw her, and I might say, she was stunning. Even though she was almost 20 years older than me, I introduced myself and that's the evening my life started to change. We started talking more and more and obviously, she knew what I did for a living. Because she was so rich, she told me to give up on the other women and be her own personal boy toy. I couldn't say no to her, so that's just what I did. I renounced all my former employers. Since I became exclusive with her, I started living in a new level of luxury. I won't say what that felt like because words can't describe it. What I do want to say is that after about two months, I found out what she did. Apart from owning a lot of different hotels and businesses. One of her most shady businesses revolved around collecting money from people who borrowed different sums from shady people like mobsters, drug dealers, loan sharks, and so on. She didn't do it herself, of course. She had her own crew of dangerous individuals, and I think some of them were assassins who were on her payroll. Yeah, that chick was really dangerous, but I didn't realize it at the time. One day, while I was chilling at the pool, drinking a fancy cocktail, she came over to me. Get up, Peter. What's up, babe? Is everything okay? I asked her wondering why she was so angry. You have started to get lazy, Peter. I gave you this life, and what do you do? Have fun all day while I work? This wasn't the deal. She told me while moving a step closer. Come on, relax. What are you on about? I replied. It's time for you to pay your dues. I want you to do something for me, she said. What? Do you want another massage? I asked while smiling. I want you to kill someone, she said without showing any emotion. 
In that moment, I dropped my drink. I could not believe what she was saying. Are you for real? I asked her. Yeah. You know I'm not going to do that, babe. I told her. And at that moment, she snapped her fingers and two massive henchmen of hers came to me and one of them took out a big knife. She took the knife from him and sat down on my chair. Then, slowly, while looking into my eyes, she put the knife on my willy. Are you sure you won't do it, Peter? She asked me without breaking eye contact. At that moment, my heart was racing. I didn't know how to react, so to save myself, I agreed to kill that person. She then smiled and gave me a peck, saying that she'll give me the details later. After about two hours, she told me who I had to kill and where that person lived. But why do you want him dead? I asked her while my voice was shaking. That's none of your business. Just do it. It's for your own good. That's the only response I got from her. Later in the night, a car dropped me off at the house. The henchman gave me a gun and just left me there. I tried to sneak into the house, walking slowly close to the wall. I eventually got in through the back door. As I was planning to go upstairs, all of a sudden the alarm went off. Red lights impaired my vision and due to the noise of the alarm, I couldn't hear my mark coming down the stairs. Got you! I heard before the sound of a gunshot pierced my ears. All of a sudden, I felt something in my arm. The bullet went through it. I panicked, dropped my gun, and ran away. The man shot a few more times in my direction, but he didn't hit me. I knew that I'll die anyway because I failed to kill my mark. So, with the little money I saved up, I bought myself a plane ticket and flew to another city that very night. Since that day, I have been living off the grid constantly in fear that she will find and kill me without hesitation. Did you enjoy the first story? If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Oh, if you want your broccoli to be served fresh, then don't forget to hit the bell icon. Keep munching. Friends, who needs them, right? To be honest, I don't have many friends right now. I did when I was a kid all through middle school and high school. When I got to college, most of us lost touch, and a year after I graduated, well, I was left with only one friend, if I can call him that. His name is Doug, and I've known him for basically all my life. We've been friends for the last 20 years, and we did everything together. Well, we used to anyway. After college, I immediately got a job. I didn't have a great financial situation, and I needed to start from somewhere. I went to several interviews and surprisingly they all wanted to hire me, but I chose the place which paid me the most money, even though it was a very slim paycheck. The job was tedious and besides all the paperwork I had to get done and all the data that I had to sort, I was also the guy you came to when you needed a cup of coffee for example. I didn't particularly like it, but I needed to pay my bills. My rent, gas for my car, and my expenses left me with a small sum of money which I managed to save month after month. You know this friend I mentioned earlier, Doug. Yeah, he's a real piece of work. One day while I was at the office, with my head buried in all kinds of papers, my phone starts ringing. I see that he's calling, but at that exact moment, my boss calls me into his office. I take the phone with me, but I ignore the call. As my boss was talking, my phone rang again. Do you have someone to talk to that's so urgent? He told me. No, sir, I'm sorry, I'll keep it on vibrate. I told him before doing just that. After work, I managed to call Doug back. Hey man, I was busy with... He didn't let me finish. Dude, I need some money like right now. Do you think you could lend me $200? He asked. That may not sound like a lot of money to most of you, but for me, it was a lot. But hey, he was my best friend and I couldn't say no. Sure thing, I'll transfer the money right now, I told him. No, I need cash. I'll come to your office. Just stay there, Doug told me before he hung up the phone. After a few days passed, I got a call again. It was from Doug. I thought he was calling to give me back the money. I didn't expect him to do it so quickly, so I was excited. Hello, I said. Hey, this is really embarrassing. 
can you lend me $300? I'll pay you back next week. I I promise. I'm just going through a rough patch right now. My boss fired me and I need some money to get by until I get another job. But I have an interview today. I want to look presentable and I was thinking that I'll buy some new clothes, Doug told me. I paused for a second. Another $300? I was trapped for cash as it was, but I guess I should help him out. He told me after all that, he'll be going to an interview. So I agreed and I gave him the money. But this didn't stop there. Oh no, not by a long shot. This continued for another five or six times. I was not someone who could say no to a friend. So I gave him almost all of my savings. The worst part was that my car broke down and I had to get it fixed. It had a problem with an oil leak and I couldn't drive it in that condition. Doug was supposed to give me back all the money almost six months ago. I didn't hear anything from him for a long time, so I decided to call him and ask him to pay me back. It was an embarrassing thing to do from my perspective, but I didn't have any other option. Hey man, I I really need the money I lent you, or maybe just a part of it? My car broke down. Call me back, I told him in a voice message. He didn't pick up the phone. After about two hours, I got a text from Doug. He didn't even have the decency to call me back. He sent me a screenshot of his bank balance. It was about $120. So, he told me he couldn't pay me back without actually saying it. It got desperate. I didn't know what to do to fix my car, but after I calmed down, I reached the conclusion that taking the bus for a month until I get my next paycheck won't be that bad. One evening while I was on the couch, I hear aggressive knocking at the door. I get up to see who it is, but I couldn't see anyone through the peephole. I opened the door and before I knew it, someone punched me right in the face, causing me to fall to the floor. Where's my money? The guy told me while picking me up by my collar and punching me again. I didn't know what was going on and I told him to stop. Who are you? You got the wrong guy, I yelled. Oh yeah? You'll give me my money now, the guy told me. I repeated myself that he had the wrong guy. You're Doug's friend, right? Yeah, I found out that Doug owed some dangerous people a lot of money. Also, the guy told me that Doug was a real party animal, spending everything he had on drugs, gambling, alcohol, and women. Doug owes us a lot of money, and when we threatened him, he told us to come to you. You'll pay his debt for him. I froze. I didn't know how to react. I got up and I told the guy that Doug owed me a lot of money also, and that I couldn't possibly pay him back. Well, I didn't come here for nothing, he told me. After saying that, he walked towards my TV. Hey, stop it! I said while putting my hand on his shoulder. The guy turned around and punched me in the face. He then took my TV and left. There I was, sitting on the floor with a bloody nose and lip, a black eye, without any money and without my TV. Eventually, I managed to get by. I ate only potatoes and bread for the next month. I fixed my car and after another month, I managed to buy a new TV. I never talked to Doug until six months later. I got a notification that the money I lent him were transferred into my account, but the owner of the person who sent it was a woman. Through mutual friends, I found out that Doug got a new girlfriend. She was loaded, but she treated him poorly, like a slave, and the only reason why he stuck around was for the money.